millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Have you ever bought anything on Black Friday and you got the item and then you thought, what the F did I just do? I spent way too much money. I didn't even need this thing. Like what happened? If you're shaking your head, yes, this episode is for you. We're talking about how to do Black Friday with a little, 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 little bit of intention so that you can care for yourself, get all the stuff you want, and still feel good afterwards. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. Hey, welcome back to the show. It is so good to have you here. This is a special bonus episode. I just felt the need to talk about Black Friday and talk about How do we spend money with intention? Because there is a lot going on, especially the next couple of days when it comes to Black Friday. And I'm going to be honest, there's a lot that's just flying at you. And it's really hard to to really center yourself and to make purchases that feel good for your bank account and also feel good for you. And I'm doing this episode and I'm really talking from my own perspective because honestly, the last couple of days, I probably have about eight or nine browser windows open on my computer and it's all stuff with Black Friday sales and it's all things that I'm kind of deciding between like, do I need this? Do I want this? And I have this kind of process that I go through to try to make sure that I spend with intention. And so I thought, let's just have this conversation together. Maybe this can help you as well. And I also want to, before we get into this chat, I just want to do a little asterisk mark on this and tell you that I am not the person that's going to sit here and tell you not to buy anything because quite frankly, I am human and I will probably make a couple of purchases on Black Friday And I'll probably make a couple of purchases that I actually don't really need on Black Friday. So we're all human. And, you know, I'm also a big fan of of rewarding yourself. We're coming to the end of the year. But I want you to do it from a place where you're not going to hate yourself (laughs) afterwards. And I have been the person who has bought way too many things, certainly in years where I really didn't have enough money to buy those things. But 
I just wanted them, right? It's like this craving that we get around Black Friday that is really hard to just calm it down. I don't know if you're um, like a a sugar person, but I am a huge sugar person, like not candy. Uh, Candy is definitely not my go-to, but I love to bake. It is honestly like so therapeutic for me. And so I always am trying to find some dessert that I can create, that I can bake, that I can eat. Uh, I kind of feel like there is no meal that is really fully a meal unless you've had some sort of sugar. In fact, when I was dating, like when I met Jeff, I met him on my husband, met him on Match.com. And at that time, that was kind of the early days of Match.com, about 11 years, almost 12 years ago. No, 11, almost 11 years ago. And you had to, um, you know, put some facts in about yourself and you had to have a headline. And my headline was, you should always have dessert first. So if that just gives you any kind of eye opening (laughs) into how much I love dessert. But what I think I also, I, I mean, I love eating dessert, but I think also what I love about dessert is cooking something, baking something, and having somebody else feel really good after they eat dessert. Like, oh my God, that was like the best thing I've ever eaten. There's nothing that makes my day feel better than that. So I, I, I'm i a lover of all desserts. I mean, cakes, cookies, cupcakes, pies, bars, you name it, right? I love a good dessert. So the whole reason I'm telling you this story about dessert is that For me, it's like this craving that I just can't get past. Like I absolutely have to have dessert. Yeah, I I have plenty of meals where I don't have dessert, but you get the idea. So I think the same thing happens around Black Friday. It's like this, I, I call it like a psychological warfare that is happening. And all of the retailers know how to really like a mind F you during this time period, right? Like they wait all year long (laughs) for these four days, particularly around Black Friday to sell all their shit to you, right? And it's, I shouldn't say shit because it's not all, it's not all bad stuff, right? But my whole point is like, they know how to get into your psyche and they know how to make you crave buying things. And then the opposite of that craving is how you feel left out if you don't make a purchase. So it's not your fault. It's not my fault, right? We've got all of these voices like competing for our attention and telling us that we need to buy the stuff or our life is going to be completely incomplete. And so you know, I think really understanding Black Friday from that perspective, and not that that's a bad thing necessarily, but just understanding what is going on. You know, we've had so many people on the show that have talked about uh, what goes on in our brain around money. We had an episode last year that was just brilliant on how to train your brain to reach money goals. If you've not listened to that episode, I highly recommend going back to listen to that episode. And we recently had uh, Ellen Vora on the show who talked about anxiety and what happens in our bodies and our brains around money anxiety. Well, this Black Friday time is like it almost creates this anxious situation in all of us where regardless of whether we can spend money or not spend money, we just feel like we need to spend money, right? And and that in itself creates this kind of anxiety because that's what creates the feeling of feeling left out if like you didn't get the best deal ever. And I know that of my like eight or nine windows that I have open on my computer, I'm always like kind of calculating like, okay, is the pre-Black Friday sale, is that going to be the same one as Black Friday Or is that going to be the same one as Cyber Monday? Or is that going to be a different type of sale? Like, should I wait? Should I push the button? Like, there is a whole lot of mind effing that is going on. And that's just me trying to figure out, am I getting the best deal? Well, I I also happen to be a money person, right? 
you listen to the show, you know that. And so I'm always in search of the best deal. And sometimes I can drive myself crazy trying to get the best deal. And then I miss out, like, right, the item is uh, out of stock in my size or whatever it might be. And then I feel really bad and really stupid for not just like pushing the button and buying the thing. But if that gives you a little crack into what goes on in my brain, (laughs) I'm constantly thinking about those types of things. And then we've had a lot of people on the show, uh, you know, that have talked about Black Friday and um, Trey Boge has been on the show many times. We just did an episode about, uh, you know, how to shop smartly for the holidays and where we went in depth around Black Friday. She talked a lot about the psychological side and just how retailers really try to get you in there. And I think this year in particular, because we're kind of in this weird economic time, right? Like, are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? There's obviously inflation, things are costing more. Um, And so, you know, I think a lot of retailers are a little nervous that they're not going to hit their numbers this year. And so they're trying to figure out ways to entice you to buy more (laughs) or to spend more that you've got to have this thing. So, I mean, this is a long story, but I'm just saying that there's a lot that goes on psychologically around Black Friday that is not your fault. And so if you're feeling these like push and pulls around Black Friday, then just know you're in like really good company because I'm sitting in the same exact space as you. In fact, on Black Friday, We are having uh, some friends over to our house. We're calling it Black Friday Blackout. (laughs) And you can use your imagination, but there'll probably be some food. There'll probably be some cocktails and some fun and just good times having, having some friends together. And one of my friends who is probably listening to this episode... Uh, who is coming over, she texted me the other day and she was like, okay, so uh, if I have a couple of beverages in me, I might start buying some things on sale. So I'm just letting you know that that might be happening on Black Friday. And I wrote back to her, I'm like, okay, well, I might be in the same position as you because even though I talk about money all day long, I'm still in this you know, warfare as well, trying to decide, like, should I buy it? Should I not buy it? Do I need it? Do I not need it? And I'm trying to use all the tools that I know to use myself to kind of spend with intention. But even with all the tools, it's still difficult. So, you know, I tell my friend, okay, I'll, I'll handhold you, (laughs) particularly if you feel like you're going like off the deep end. Uh, But then I might also, you know, sit next to you and, and push a couple buttons and order a couple things as well. So, just so you know, if you're someone who is already thinking, okay, uh, should I have my phone on me on Black Friday? Should I be by my computer, not by my computer? Am I going to get the best deal? Am I not going to get the best deal? Just know you're in really good company. So this idea of intention, of spending with intention, is really about creating a an environment right around you where you have the best odds of coming out feeling good about yourself. So intention also means taking some time to think about something. So what I like to do with my eight or nine windows that I've opened on my computer is give myself 24 hours. I know that might be a little hard around Black Friday, but give myself some space between I put it in the cart, that was my impulse, thinking that I really, really needed this versus pushing the button and ordering it. So, I mean, that could be 30 minutes for you. That could be an hour. It could be 15 minutes. It doesn't It doesn't matter the amount of time. But intention means we have to create some sort of space between the impulse and the action. And so, you know, you can do all sorts of things prior to actually putting it in the card, I'm going to talk to you about like a few things that I do just to see if it might work for you, might not, right? This episode is all about taking taking what you want, throwing out the rest, but giving you this, this space and permission in order to build in a little bit of intention. And I think one of the biggest just strategies I have before Black Friday is really thinking about creating like an inventory list. 
So without your computer open, without your phone open, just get out a piece of paper and write down like, what do I actually really need, right? Do I need a new winter coat? Because the couple I have now, uh, they're not, (laughs) they're not keeping me warm. Do I need a new pair of black shoes? Because the pair I have, I mean, I like them, but maybe they rub my feet or maybe I got them last year and I just kind of like a new pair of black shoes this year, or maybe I have a house and, you know, we've been thinking about getting like a security system, but we've kind of been like, I don't know if we want to pay the money for that, but maybe it might be on sale Black Friday. And maybe that just might be the thing that pushes me over the edge because I actually really do want that. Like that will help me feel safe in my house. So taking a little inventory of what I actually really need in writing that down. That's going to give you the basis for building in some intention before you start bringing in like the computer and the phone and start, you know, when you start looking on social media and seeing everybody doing all these ads now as they will of all the things that, um, you know, they're sponsored for and all that kind of stuff, right? So if we, if we create the inventory before, at least we have a little bit of intention kind of built in before we go out and like actually start the shopping process. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Okay, so you're armed with your inventory list of the things that you actually really need. (laughs) And from there, we have to think about how much do I actually want to spend? So it's always great to set a specific amount of money. You know, it could be $100, $500, $1,000, like whatever it is for you. Set a specific amount of money where you say, okay, this is the max I want to spend. But the tricky part with actually setting some sort of budget is, and we've talked about this on so many different episodes, and this is something I've been trying to do at least the last year, and I can report back that it does have it does have success to it when you do this, right? So let's say my budget is $200, that I don't want to spend over $200 during this four-day period. That's kind of my my max. What I need to also attach to that is some sort of why or feeling what happens if I go over the $200. So maybe it's if I go over the $200, I'm going to have to turn to my credit card. And if I turn to my credit card, I know I'm not going to be able to pay that off anytime soon. I also know that we're in a really high period of inflation. That means credit card interest rates have gone up. So I'm going to end up paying a lot more for any amount that I go over $200. 
And then that means that I'm not going to have enough money to put towards the travel fund that I want to start next year. So it's a cascade of things for me. It's also not going to make me feel really great. I hate the idea of having extra credit card debt. So that's going to make me feel really angsty and anxious, and I'm not going to like that, right? So I'm just giving you an example. This is how you kind of walk things out. I always talk about this idea of seven whys, right? So if, let's say my budget is $200, and I go over the $200, my first question is, why am I okay going over the $200, right? If I go over the $200, I figured out why I'm okay going over. Maybe I'm not okay of going over. Why that? Well, why that, right? So I'm like, I'm digging deeper and deeper to find like the core feeling or emotion around money that I can attach to. And it usually comes back to some sort of like fear, um, guilt, shame. Uh, It's usually a negative emotion, anxious angry, um, you know, all, all, all sorts of things. So for me, I'm going to give you an example. Okay. There is a coat that I have been thinking that I wanted. It is like, I have never spent this much money on anything that I own really. I mean, clothes wise. So it's like a massive investment. And I live somewhere now where it gets cold in the winter And I'm always cold. Like I always have like multiple layers on and I've got gloves on and all sorts of stuff. And so Jeff is always like, why don't you just buy like a really nice, nice coat so you're not freezing all the time? And I'm like, this is a really great idea. So I started looking at coats and there's a brand that is just like the ultimate brand of coat. But this coat, my friend, this coat is ridiculously expensive. Like I look at it and I'm like, I just, I can't, I can't justify paying this price. So he ended up getting it for me for a Christmas gift. And he actually gave it to me early because he's like, well, it's cold now. I want you to be able to wear this coat. And so I put this coat on and the first feeling I got when I put this coat on was it's too heavy and it just feels uncomfortable on me. So then I started to think about, okay, does it feel uncomfortable because I know how much this coat cost? Or is it uncomfortable just because this thing is uncomfortable? And what what I came to was it's uncomfortable just because it's big, it's heavy, like the, the hood fits a little weird. I just feel like a little claustrophobic kind of in this coat. And so I decided like, okay, I thought I really wanted this coat, but I put it on. I don't feel great in it. Uh, I just, I want to send it back. Let's find a coat that I actually feel good in it. And so I don't even know why I'm telling you this, this whole long story, but just to say that that is really thinking about a purchase with intention too, right? So if you buy something, I want you to really think about like, how does it feel on me? I think so often we buy something just because we want to buy something we try it on and maybe it doesn't feel the best. Like maybe it's itchy or the shoe rubs or I don't know, the color isn't exactly right. But we're like, whoa, we got got it on the sale on Black Friday. Oh yes, here was the point about the coat. (laughs) The coat was $400 off the normal price, right? And so, you know, it was like, okay, well, it's less expensive. Like, Maybe I like it. Maybe I don't like it. And then I ended up thinking about it overnight. And I was like, no, this is this is not the, it's beautiful, freaking warm coat, but this is not the right coat for me. And so I was able to make that decision from a place of intention, from a place of like really thinking things through, thinking about obviously the money component. I could afford the coat, but did I want to spend that much on a coat that just didn't feel freaking fantastic when I tried it on, right? So bringing intention to something is also thinking about like, how does something feel when you get it? Do you you try it on and you're like, man, this is awesome. Or you get that security system and you're like, yeah, okay. I feel protected now. Like I, I feel awesome, right? That's how I want you to feel about your purchases. And part of this whole like psychological warfare that goes on around Black Friday is 
making you feel like you need the item and then you get the item and you're not exactly like elated about it, but you're like, well, I got it on sale and, uh, you know, it takes time to return it, et cetera, et cetera. No, I want you to bring this intention into it. And I want you to think about like, how's this thing make me feel? Uh, do I not like it? Is there something a little bit off? If there is, send it back, my friend. There are other things you can you can get and who cares if it's not on the Black Friday sale, right? So I don't know. I, I, I like that idea of, of thinking about things from that perspective. It also makes me think about um, there was a pair of shoes that I, that I really wanted. And, you know, I was doing a Google search for like, where's the best deal for these particular pair of shoes. And the sites kept coming up, the, um, the secondhand sites like Macari and Poshmark and all of those sites. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just go over and like check out. And I was like, wow, I can get those shoes. They maybe been worn once or twice, but who cares? They look brand new. Like I can get them for a really good deal. And, and for me, that makes me feel good because, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reusing something, right? I'm not, not buying something new. That's something that is becoming kind of a passion of mine. Not everything that I buy, but some things that I buy. So, you know, I think this whole idea of intention is also about being creative about your purchases. I am a, I know that uh, a lot of us hate like putting our email in to, to sign up for like, you know, some retailers email newsletter, but particularly around Black Friday, if I get an extra like 10 or 20% off just for giving you my email and then I can cancel, I can un- unsubscribe after I get the item, like I'm going to go for it, right? <laughs> Um, if I find, if I'm all about getting the best deal, like let's do whatever we can to actually get the best, the best deal. So back to this coat story. So we got the coat. I tried the coat on, decided the next day, okay, I don't think that this coat is for me. Then we went to try to return the coat and their customer service from the place that we got the coat was so terrible. It took us like 10 tries on the chat to actually get a return label. And it was, I think it was about an hour or so that we spent like just trying to return the item. (laughs) And I was like, okay, this just solidifies that this coat was, was not for me. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo makes banking faster and easier like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can in the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member of DIC. So we've also talked a lot about... Um, those like buy now, pay later, you know, like after pay and affirm. And I know that usually brings out a strong opinion in people, whether you love them or hate them. I actually think that they're amazing. It's totally changed how I've been able to like budget and buy things. I love that I can pay something off over four, um, four payments. Uh, sometimes you can get a deal where like on a firm, you could get a deal where you could pay it off over a year. Uh, usually it's 0% offers, which is fantastic. So I can buy something, I can have the item, then I can pay you over, you know, I think it's like what, four to six weeks, something like that with 0% interest. I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, I think that's just kind of a, a smart way to buy things. But of course, the issue is you have to have that money in your account. <laughs> you have to be able to pay for that item. Otherwise, you end up in the same place of, you know, not being able to pay for it on a credit card. You get interest and all sorts of stuff. It starts dinging your credit. So, you know, if you're going to use one of those, make sure that you know you've got the money in your account to actually pay for that specific item. Or I've seen a lot of people use, you know, like buy now, pay later, where you attach it to a credit card. And so if you're going to do that, like make sure that you pay off each chunk in the time period, uh, you know, when it when it posts on your credit card so that you don't end up having that really high interest attached to your card, right? So 
Think about also with intention is thinking about how am I going to pay for this item? If I'm going to pay out of my savings, is that going to hurt another goal? If I'm going to put it on a credit card, am I going to get interest attached to that and end up paying more for that specific item? If I'm going to use a buy now, pay later, which um, is a great idea, you know, am I going to be able to make those those payments? So thinking about everything from that perspective. And, you know, for me in particular, I have a really tough time like going to a particular site and buying just one thing. I honestly, when I was thinking about doing this episode, I was like, when was the last time specifically on like a clothing retailer where I bought one item? Because they're also brilliant at saying, right, if you want free shipping, you've got to spend like up to, you know, $35 or $50 or $100 depends on the on the retailer. And so you start just adding more things in your cart. Do you need them? Do you not need them? Are they on your inventory list? I don't know, right? Half the time they are. And I'm just like, okay, well, I'll throw in that hat and I guess I'll throw in that belt or whatever to get me up to free shipping, which is totally ridiculous because I'd end up spending less if I actually just bought the one item that I needed, paid for the shipping, even though we all hate paying for shipping, but I'm still going to come out <laughs> a lot less than I am if I start adding all these items in just to get the free shipping. So this whole idea about intention, the next four days, a Black, Black Friday is like taking these moments, a pause between everything. So you make your inventory list pause, think about it, look over it. Okay. Is it, is it good? You set your budget. Okay. Pause. Think about, is that really my budget? How am I going to feel if I go over that budget? What am I sacrificing if I go over that budget? Okay. Then I'm on the site and I'm looking around for my items and maybe I see that free shipping and I think, ah, oh, I got to add up to a specific amount to get that free shipping, right? Take a pause. Think about which option actually works better for me? Should I just pay for the shipping? I mean, we used to just pay for shipping. I know that, you know, since Amazon has come around, we all hate, I hate paying for shipping, but we used to pay for shipping and it was okay. <laughs> also look at, um, specifically if it's a site where you haven't ordered before, look at their return policy. So a lot of sites will say, if you need to return something, they're going to charge you like $6.99 or something for the shipping. I mean, not that you wouldn't buy something, but this again is the whole idea of intention. If it's something that's on sale, make sure that you could return it. Uh, a lot of times I have bought something that is on sale and I go to return it. I'm like, oh, it was one of those final sale things. I can't return it. So now I've got to either gift it to somebody or it's just sitting in my closet and then I feel all the money shame. Like, why did I do this? Why did I buy this thing? I could have used this money for something else. And so I try not to do that shame part because that really doesn't help anyone. But I'm just, you know, I'm human just like you and I feel all of the emotions around money. So this idea of ten intention is, is bringing it into every little piece that you're going to do over the next couple of days. And lastly, I just want to say after all of this, that, you know, sometimes it's okay to just buy something on Black Friday because it just makes you feel really good. And I'm probably going to be in that same boat as you are on Black Friday. I mean, I don't, if I don't buy something on Black Friday, it would be quite surprising. Uh, but I also have this history of, you know, having eight browser windows open and then just going, okay, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. And so that's my way of, of spending with intention because I really whittle it down. But this for me, I mean, this is like, you know, I've had these windows opens now for like three or four days since the pre Black Friday sales. So, you know, I spend a lot of time in this. You don't have to be that way. You don't have to be quite as crazy as I am with it. But just every step of the way, think about, is this a decision that I really want to make, right? Is this something that I really want to do? Or is this going to impact something negative? Is this going to, you know, elicit an emotion in me negatively that's going to make me feel really bad about myself? Or 
Am I going to end up spending more money than I actually know that I can conceivably spend, right? So I want you to just think about that. But I also want to empower you to, yeah, go out there and buy something. (laughs) It's Black Friday. Take advantage of all the sales. Just do it creatively. Do it with some intention. And I wish you an amazing Black Friday. I'll try to report back on what actually happened for me on Black Friday, or what I actually purchased. But I'm pretty proud of myself for, for deciding that even though this coat was the coat of all coats, it just didn't feel good on me. And so I needed to listen to that message and go, okay, this is a really effing amazing coat, <laughs> but this is not the coat for me. Let me go out and actually find the coat for me. And so that was a that was a good that was a good process, right? That was my moment of pause of really thinking about this. So I hope you have an amazing Black Friday and I wish you nothing but lots of spending with intention. If you enjoyed this episode, hey, shoot it off to a friend right now. Tell them you might want to listen to this before you, you know, start buying everything on Black Friday. As always, you can head to the show notes for all the links to our amazing sponsors who make this show possible. I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. 